Ahoy, shipmates! Today, we have Aurora departing Southampton. This will be a fun one. MSC Vertuza is on the right-hand side of your screen. She is the biggest MSC ship ever, as you can see, just her bridge in the top right. Aurora, you'll be able to see her amazing Union Jack on the front of the ship in a minute. And you can also see her blue horn, which got put in in 2014. MV Aurora is a cruise ship of P&O Cruises fleet. The ship was built by Mayor Wolf at the shipyard in Penberg in Germany. At just over 76,000 tonnes, Aurora is the smallest and oldest of six ships currently in service with P&O Cruises. She officially entered service with the company in April 2000 was named by Anne, Princess Royal in Southampton, United Kingdom. She was refitted in 2014, where the famous P&O Union Jack stripes were painted on the front. Aurora is just spinning around here, as you can see. And also you can see the MSC Vertuza. Just see her name along the bottom right. It's a bit blurry, but you can see it. You can also see an array of people on the Mayflower Park Park uh, just in front of you. Also, the uh, cargo ship at the back, the HMM cargo ship, is at the back of her as well. She is obviously, like we said, the smallest ship in P&O, following by the Arcadia, then the Azora, then the Ventura, then Britannia, then Iona and Arvia. Iona will be coming into Stanton on Sunday, so be prepared for that video. It will be a cool one. Of course, I see the ice cream truck down there and the Isle of Wight ferry, red funnel ferry, um, in fact, uh, docking station, which um, there's also a live cam on. So, uh, yeah, you can go and see that live cam on YouTube right here in, um, in live. Aurora's just coming out of your view here to spin around, but she will be back in a minute. But in the meantime, you can have a look at the scenery. Anyway, just a quick chat about the new Terminal Horizon, which is Terminal 5. What I don't quite understand is why they called it the Horizon Terminal. Horizon is actually the newspaper for P&O ferries, which you get every morning when you're on board. But P&O is not actually going to be docking at the New Horizon terminal. So uh, we're a bit confused with that one. Anyway. Oh, it's also Horizon, Restu Horizon Restaurant on Aurora. Uh, my favourite was the Lido Grill. But now we won't be going on it because they don't take children. The Aurora has just disappeared out of your sight, but don't worry. You can see the array of lifeboats, I mean the tugs, just in front of the cargo ship and the array of big, well, not very big, but the big, sort of big yachts or little boats just in front of you, which Aurora will have to be careful of just in case it hits them. Is the Aurora Harvey, is that flat bottomed? Uh, no, it's not actually. Oh. That's the Oriana. Oh, Oriana, yeah. Basically flat bottom, meaning it hasn't got much of a bottom, so it's a bit, they were a bit worried it might sort of roll over in heavy winds. While it was in the Atlantic Ocean, and that's why Aurora, uh, Oriana, sorry, is I think the only p &O ship that can't go over the Atlantic Ocean. But she managed to sail through the Pacific Ocean when she got to China, when she left p &O back in 2019. We were going to watch it go out, but because of um, COVID started happening at that point, they delayed the sailing until 12 o'clock at midnight in uh, our time in the UK, which we thought was very stupid. We were sad that we missed it, but uh, we went down there one day just before she went out and they had already taken the stripes off of her. So uh, we didn't catch a glimpse of her stripes before she left for the last time. Uh, but um, it is what it is. The cars down there, obviously, there's loads of people coming in. I didn't think there would be as many as people. But obviously, the videos you showed yesterday, there was a lot of people down in um, Mayflower Park, where you're looking at right now, which is where the video that I posted before was uh, filmed, as the MSC Vitruza went into Samson, which was a um, 
very big event. Also, I would post a Disney Magic video, but it's really hard to, especially when I didn't really plan it. And uh, yeah, it was very fun to see it. Anyway, Harvey, just for uh, while we're waiting for Aurora to come around the corner and turn around, hopefully she hasn't sunk somewhere in uh, between dot gate six and five. Um, a joke for you. Why can't people on cruises play cards? I don't know. Because they're standing on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? I think I've, uh, I think I've got another one somewhere. Um... No, as you see the tugboat, so just going over to Aurora now, she's probably just anchored mm. there for five minutes, just waiting for the tugs to go over to her. She must need a bit of help. So while out in sea, what did one ocean say to the other ocean? I don't know. Nothing, it just waved. <laughs> oh, dear. Well. Anyway. I see people walking around in the park. There's lots of people there. <clears throat> anyway, there was a very nervous first time cruiser uh, when I was very f fortunate enough to go on a cruise. And uh, I overheard the ne nervous first time cruiser ask the captain, uh, excuse me, Captain, do ships like this sink very often? He asked the captain. When you're at Anchorage, where she's been for the last year and a half, she is very beautiful, in fact. She is quite a strange ship. She is the only ship of her kind. And, uh, yeah, she's pretty rare, obviously. Some people haven't seen her before. And uh, we're obviously really lucky to have her here in Southampton, based here, and uh, she will always be based here. But I was always thinking, which ship's gonna leave next when the next piano ship is gonna be a thing? Obviously, the Oriana went when the, uh, Ori no, the, yeah, the Oriana went when Iona was gonna come in, and then Oceana is gonna, is going, well, has gone for Arvia. So when another cruise ship of pianos is gonna be made, the smallest one normally goes, which means Aurora will go. But I feel like Aurora is too, too, like, it's just too, like, luxurious. Too, like, too, too. <laughs> like, too, like, <laughs> luxurious for P&O. And it's, it's a definite flagship for P&O. <clears throat> I'm honestly concerned that uh, P&O are uh, edging towards no children whatsoever. Really? Hmm. I think the only difference with P&O is that there's loads of options available. There's normally a Royal Caribbean ship that you could have an option of, MSC, and they always have slides on them and they always have kids stuff. But P&O ships, like I thought Iona and Arvia would definitely have a slide, but they don't even have a slide. Like kids clubs are the only thing they have. Maybe for older children it would be alright, but like some people like to go on cruises that you can take kid children and so on. I mean, Arcadia and Aurora are adults only anyway, so you can't. Wait, is that yellow on the front of the ship? No, it's just the light. Oh. Unless it's all gone rusty. Yeah, it probably has. Everything parked out in Weymouth for the last year has gone rusty. Yeah. No, it's just the tree, I think. Oh. You guys see the uh, lifeboats on the edge of the ship. I've got this little secret for you. It's got nothing to do with uh, P&O. But the Norwegian Escape and Nor Norwegian Bliss have different lifeboats. As you can see, the Aurora has the same like uh, form of lifeboats as Norwegian Bliss, as they're inside the ship. But the only reason why they're inside the ship, uh, if you can see what I mean, is because they go through the Panama Canal sometimes. And when they go through the Panama Canal, they need to make sure their tugboats don't hit anything when they come through. Which is why the Norwegian Escape has stuck out lifeboats because it doesn't go through the Panama Canal. And if it was Did going you make to, that up or was that true? No, it's true. Okay. And if they were going to, it would either risk it or it would have to go all the way around, um, mm. uh, what do you call it, the uh, Argentina. Mm. Look at she the is stripes. She's yellow. They're lovely, isn't they? She's pretty yellow. But yeah, she's got pretty rusty set out there in the old um, yeah. Weymouth Sea. Basically, they're just floating skips at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they are. 
I think she's a pretty small ship, but she's still like very good sized because we've been on it before. And when we went on it, we were like, this ship does not seem as small as it is. And um, yeah, it's pretty strange that she's pretty small, but she doesn't seem small to um, many people. And, uh, Here we go. We've just swapped cameras uh, in the port of Southampton. Now we're overlooking Red Funnel Terminal. On the rival screen, you can see Aurora. It's a bit of a smaller camera. It makes her look a bit smaller. You can see the difference, obviously, between the smaller ships, as in the Red Funnel ships, obviously. But Aurora is 83,000 gross tonnage. No, 70... 77. 78, yeah. 78. Thousand gross tonnage. Six, Seventy-six. Seventy-six thousand gross tonnage, which is uh, for you Americans about the same size as Disney Magic. Which um, Disney Magic is a bit bigger, but like it's not much. Um... They won't be the Americans watching this. There goes a jet plane. Uh, you should hear the sonic boom in a minute. Yeah, you can see that uh, red jet next to on the left of uh, the red funnel ship. Um, she is sat there at the moment. She has been sat there for ages, on and off. Uh, I keep seeing her there. Uh, Aurora is about 20 minutes late as she was supposed to depart at is there another seven. camera in a minute? Yes, there is actually. Over there. Well, in a minute, I thought, <clears throat> up until recently, that the Titanic went out on Terminal 106 next to the very sad departure of the mill that they knocked down, which was, I think was a bit of history, but anyway. Um, but actually, the Titanic went out near Ocean Terminal. Which we'll see in a minute. Uh, which and we'll, we'll see also see minute. Britannia. Mm. Uh, no cruise ship actually docks in that terminal anymore. Um, but uh, Queen... Queen Victoria. Victoria part there on uh, the 100th anniversary of the Titanic sinking. Uh, which I don't think they actually told anybody, but that was the theory. That's what they did anyway. We went down there, remember? Mm. We went down mm. there, and uh, I didn't actually take a picture. It's near 38. Uh, it's, it's in birth 44, mm. which is Britannia's birth is 46. Mm. Right now she's in 45, which is really weird, but she's normally in 46 when she has passengers, mm. which is um, which is the same port as uh like just over the side of the port of ocean terminal mm. you can also see um the uh pier just going out to the pier which when you go down you have a really good view of the britannia or whatever in ocean terminal which is where we will be when iona comes in on sunday the video will go out later on on sunday in our time which would be about seven o'clock my time and 12 o'clock in us time Aurora's just about to go past, so let's switch cameras and let's watch her go. Here we go, we're back. And you can see the Aurora just above the Starbucks on the pier. This is the pier, like I just said just a minute ago, of where Iona will um, be parking, just opposite this pier. And it's not a very good Starbucks because they never have anything. They seem to have water and a bit of coffee, but nothing else. It's a very small Starbucks, and also right at the bottom right of your screen, maybe a bit above the bottom right of the screen, you can see the uh, red jet uh, parking or the red jet docking uh, port. They park just down by those um, big tall uh, sailing boat um, railing things. And Aurora, you can see, going past there. She's going pretty fast. She's one of the fastest ships in the world. Will she um, do a horn, currently. you reckon, when she goes past Britannia? Um, maybe. She's going past Britannia right now. We'll switch to the camera in a minute where you'll see the Titanic uh, port. Mm. And you'll also see this famous author's uh, yacht, which uh, it'll be interesting to see. Mm. And we'll get a glimpse of her very amazing, unique back here. We've seen three ships now with a pretty... Um, Weird back is Queen Mary 2 and Oceana, um, not Oceana, Oriana and Aurora. Um, I think we should swap to the main camera at Ocean Terminal now, um, just in case we miss the horn. Yep. Here we are on the super yacht cam, and I'm going to use my pointer because here, if you can see that, was where Titanic 
set sail on its maiden voyage. So uh, that's something you learn every day. Not over by 105 where the mill used to be, which I always thought it was for years. You can see Britannia on the right side of your screen. In a minute, you will see the Aurora when the camera switches over. Like I was talking about just a minute ago, this yacht right here is the yacht that um, the special author has. And this is the same place as where the... Um... Do you know the author's name? No, I don't know the author's name, but I remember when the, um, what's his name? The guy who is really, has a lot of money. The most famous guy in the world. Elton Musk. No, the guy who owns Microsoft. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Bill Gates' yacht was here, uh, or in the Icebreaker Terminal, which is uh, just in uh, like this terminal here, on this line here. Uh, yeah, and she, I think, one of the biggest yachts in the um, in the world. You can also see the red funnels here and here, and Britannia right here. You can also see the ocean terminal terminal right here. This is where you come through, which means if you were going to go on it today, you'd be able to see the amazing yacht, which I don't think the author's actually been on before, which is very uh, strange. Also, you've got the cargo terminal, which is actually the terminal that the Titanic went in, the cargo ship's port here sometimes as well. As we were waiting for her to come through, I realised... That this ship has just come in, this tugboat has just come in uh, to the port as we were uh, doing stuff. Like uh, we were just waiting for the Aurora to come along. And this is also the ship that gave the water out to the MSC Virtuosa yesterday when she came in. Uh, that was a ship that you can see in my um, PFP uh, on the outline of the PFP. Uh, and that's um, the tugboat that did it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now. And I will come back with you when Aurora has arrived, just going along this bit here. Here we go. The Aurora is coming through, bushing through the waves. And you can see her tugboat um, that I was talking about earlier, her tugboat. So inside the ship, do you see that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why. And you can also see the deck that people can actually walk along here. Uh, I've been along there before. I don't know what these are for, actually. They're probably crew um, stuff. They probably are doing engineering or it's something like that because I don't think they're actually windows. It's an open space going into the inside. And you can also see the famous piano cruises sign on every single back of every single piano ship. The only... Oh, God, it's cloud. The only difference between all the piano ship's colours or paint colours is the back. The Iona and the Arvia have the Union Jack on the back, but I'm not sure if these ships are going to have it or not, uh, but we'll see. I'm going to sort this out, and then I'll be back. There we go, we're back. We sorted that out. You could also it's move the camera again, but this, I'm pretty sure, is Cow Shop? Sandbank? Oh, well, it's somewhere in Foley, uh, which is where... So she'll go down by Foley, and then she'll go around here, and then you'll see her around here, and then she will come back round and then down. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to end the video here. Thank you for watching Aurora go out with us. The camera's cow again. Thank you for watching. Bye, shipmates.